when I started dancing for like maybe the first couple, first two, three years, I was just the worst in my group. And I was uh, bullied a lot among teenagers and they laughed at me and like, it was just terrible. <laughs> My name is Marina Perecrest. Um, I consider myself as an artist, not just choreographer. Uh, dance industry includes lots of notions like dancer, choreographer, dance teacher and stuff. I consider myself like an artist because I might create concept for the video, I might create choreography, I can teach dance uh, and I can perform. So I'm an artist. I started my dance path when I was about 14 and I really loved like street dance, uh, hip hop, jazz fan, jazz, I loved it very much and uh, I fell in love with the videos of Britney Spears dancing when I was a teenager, like a little girl and I, would, I just felt that I want to do the same. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, I found myself in uh, high heels style, which is very feminine, uh, sexy, sometimes it might be very diverse. It's not only about sexy side, of course. So yeah, I found myself in uh, frame up strip style. And I guess I will explain right away what is frame up strip style. My name is Chantel Beasley, and I'm the owner and operator of Aradia Fitness Edmonton, Sherman Park, and St. Albert. Marina emailed me, she said she was interested in teaching Frame Up Strip, and I was like, what is Frame Up Strip? I have no idea. And she sent me all of these videos, and I kind of got a better understanding of what it was. And when I had seen the stuff that she was sending, I was like, oh, this would work so well with what our students are looking for, because um, they're dancing in the high platform shoes, which we do in pole as well. And so, yeah, we basically met, chatted about what she offers and what her dance classes look like. And I, it was a no brainer for me to want to have her join our team. So when I started dancing, I wanted to learn how to dance so much and it was like my passion i i just loved the music i loved movement and i like to express myself so it was like passion expression of my emotions right something that i could not let out like you're not gonna uh dance during school hours right you have to study you have to do something else and you're looking for the way to let out your emotions and stuff uh, but later, I recognized that um, dance uh, turned out to be my therapy and uh, I did not like really um, recognize it until a certain age and uh, dance turned out to be my therapy because due to abusive relationships between my mother and father, I often 
I learned to be like invisible, do not attraction, do not like uh, attract attention to myself mm. and uh, kind of be invisible. Mm. So don't create problems, like don't attract any attention. And when I started dancing, somehow I found a way to let it out and kind of start expressing myself. And uh, yeah, uh, that's why I was so in love with this dance, because it's like, it makes you maybe free, not maybe, of course, it's like. So as I said, um, I was very fascinated by MTV styles, like uh, that I saw on music channels. It was Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Michael Jackson, Chris Brown, uh, so these are hip hop, just funk styles, right? And uh, when I was younger, I actually started listening hip hop. And uh, among like my community, among my friend, it was like, I was even actually um, almost got beaten for that. Because uh, like my community was like kind of hooligans and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> among children of my age yeah. and a little bit older so yeah maybe I was kind of uh, out of the crowd in this case and uh, what else oh uh, my mother told me that when I was very little I was attracted to ballet and when I saw like uh, break, break dance on TV or like ballet when I was very small I was trying to repeat it so, and then when I became a teenager, like, I'm like, wow, this is so cool. Marina's style of dance is very technical, um, very, like, uh, lots of accents in her dance. So lots of, like, little accents that you don't even, I don't know, I'm not a dancer that hits specific accents because, well, I didn't grow up learning dance. <laughs> so that stuff comes a little bit as more of a challenge to me. So every, like, half beat, Marina has some kind of a specific accent to it. Um, so quite intense, um, fantastic choreography, advanced choreography for students as well, really challenging, which some of her students need. And um, yeah, I would say that's Marina's style of, of instruction. The key word is story. Okay. So when I, like, when I was uh, at the start, let's say when I started dancing and I was at the beginning for the few first years, I thought about like moves and it is a stupid way. You kind of, oh, like I learned some hip hop, oh, I learned some this style and that style. And then I can take some music and I can combine these moves and I can create something like uh, interesting. But it's like <laughs> a rookie mistake because when you think about a piece of choreography, a piece of some music composition, whatever, first thing you think about is a story. What do I want to input in this piece? For example, I'm creating like a small piece, solo piece, right? And uh, for example, I found the music that inspires me. And I think like in what way it inspires me, what it reminds me of, like what story do I have on my mind? And I can start from here and start developing it. Or uh, what character is this? Uh, what am I talking about with this character? Uh, what emotions and, you know, just to build story. And from there you can go to the studio, you can turn on the music and you can start experimenting with the forms, maybe it can start from some light improvisation and from, depending on the story that you have on your mind, you start moving. So it's the story that uh, starts your movement, not that movement. Yeah, and you like start thinking, oh, this character should be like chill, loose and like in a way and all oh, this character for example should be like tensed and the muscles should be like tightened and stuff so you think about story when i started dancing for like maybe the first couple first two three years i was just the worst in my group and i was uh, 
bullied a lot among teenagers and they laughed at me and like it was just terrible <laughs> I like I kind of wanted to express myself and I wanted to perform and I was like so like into it but at the same time I was very shy because I knew that behind my back these people like they are laughing at me and bully me um, but then anyway I overcame it because it's like <laughs> we have like countless approvals that talent doesn't count, your hard work counts. So that's how I got better. I overcame like all of these emotional kind of difficulties with bullying and all of that. And around 16, I already felt like more confident. So you asked me to describe my style, style of dance, dance. Yeah. and uh, in this case I'd like to start from some background because a frame-up strip is not common in Canada. So it is high heels. High heels it's a mix of modern styles performed in high heels. But it's called like that because uh, in Russia there is kind of strip style it's called like that because it's like originally it's sexy and smooth and feminine and blah 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 but then um, in 2010-11 uh, one uh, dancer she started experimenting with this kind of basic and maybe already boring style uh, mediocre I would say and she started adding some more musical moments, like for example, not plain rhythm, but she's taking some music layers and like accents, bass beats, hi hats, uh, vocal parts, different layers. And she starts uh, using different styles and uh, adapting it to high heels. That's how the style started. In Russia and uh, yeah we can call it high heels but these high heels uh, let's say like originally Russian high heels it's performed in uh, pole dance professional shoes with a platform uh, so total the height of the heel six to eight inches and um, I would describe this style as uh, very graceful as very elegant because uh, even if it's sexy character, you perform it in a, such a graceful uh, and elegant manner that no one ever tell you that it is like vulgar, right? Because there is difference between vulgar and sexy, elegant and graceful. So this style is about the second. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's a mix of modern styles performed in heels. I'm, I'm just trying to visualize it for a person who has never seen it. So let's say it's uh, ballet vibes in combination with uh, hip hop, piping, jazz, whatever. Depending on music, depending on your character, it might be creepy character, it might be sexy character, it might be lyrical, like sad, whatever, angry. You just go from the mood. And uh, uh, the basis is high heels. It's very advanced technique uh, borrowed from ballet. So you point your feet, you tighten your knees uh, where it's necessary. And uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to visualize it with words, but I don't know, does it make any sense? I would say that in the past few years, I refused to follow some gurus, to refuse, I refused to follow some like big names or stuff like that. Before that, when I was less experienced, I could watch at someone and be like, oh my God, this is perfection. Um, with years, I got calmer. Of course, it doesn't mean that I don't admire these like big professionals, but um, I got calmer in a way that each artist, dancer, musician, whatever, is an individual, 
and uh, like it's uh, each path is very unique and of course we can be inspired by someone of course we can admire someone but it's never ever should be in a way like I put someone on the pedestal mm. yeah I never ever should be and I think I would recommend this to any artist admire be inspired but never put someone on pedestal never be like oh my god he's a god he's perfection no he's the same artist like you but more experienced let's say but you always should look for your own way for your own unique style and just be inspired by someone that you like so um, of course i have someone who i admire from american dance stage from russian ukrainian different countries i also um, i was also influenced uh, very much by new york theater stage when um, i saw big immersive theater uh, how it's called oh my god i forgot just a moment sleep no more they have other projects as well, but like these immersive theaters are pretty expensive. They are totally worthy. And uh, yeah, I saw one of them once and it's just uh, that influenced, influenced me a lot because I saw a combination of uh, design, of uh, light design, stage design, light design, music, decorations dance and story and all of that in combination and just like unfor unforgettable experience that's what i want to create with my idea and that's like is like my biggest dream to create something like this in canada and yeah to create lots of jobs lots of um, good um, how to say it to, to affect community in a good way and stuff like this, yeah. So, like, of course, I think about money as well, but it's not, like, my main goal, making money. Making money is good for implementing your goal, right? For sure. developing the project, for living a good life, but it's not, like, the most important goal. It's been fantastic working with her because she brings a completely unique aspect of, of dance, um, which really ties in well with our pool community, like I said. So she's with her frame up strip. They're dancing in the high platform shoes, which we already do here as well. A lot of the movement and the floor work stuff, we can tie into a lot of our pool stuff that we're doing. Um, she's super creative. She takes a lot of initiative in her work and she loves putting forth together like new adventures for students. She loves getting them involved in video shoots. She loves making sure that they're nailing the choreography. She's very intense with her choreography. Um, and I think you can really see the different teaching styles between Russian instructors and our Canadian instructors. Um, you can tell that, you know, folks in Russia are very like adamant about hitting the correct timings. Um, so it's a little bit more intense than what we're used to here in Canada. So I think students have got had to get a little bit more used to uh, being under Marina's di direction. So uh, I have a good level compared to strong dancers and uh, founders of this style who are mostly in Russia, mostly, yeah. Uh, here, in general, uh, the level of dance is uh, low um, and I'm comparing to not so big city like Edmonton right and I talked with other dancers and in not so big cities they have like pretty the same situation I guess because uh, if someone wants to dance professionally here they take some basic here and they move to maybe Toronto, Vancouver, someone moves to Los Angeles and not so many dancers like high level stay here for some different reasons, yeah, whatever. And uh, I see that lots of people, even dance teachers, 
they don't know basic really well. I'm talking about the styles in general. I'm talking about like learning about your body in general because any style you start from you need to know basic isolations you need to know basic groove like musicality feeling of music maybe i encountered it because i worked a lot with uh, pole dancers because mostly like i would say here pole dancers love high heel styles yeah and um yeah it's like a big segment let's say from people who love high heels dance yeah and i would say like yeah from this point that's what i see here people not so many people know basic really well and not not depending on the style um and yeah i had to slow down because i have to explain a lot as i said like basic isolations basic musicality and uh, something that i consider hard here for people it will be easy for students in russia because they are into it much more they practice much more i don't know how it's connected as i said maybe because like the strongest dancers they move and they look for opportunities in bigger cities so in Edmonton, I noticed there's a lot of diversity being offered for dance classes, but I would say that Edmonton lacks diversity in offering dance classes to adults who don't already have a dance background. And so I see a lot of folks that are constantly asking for these classes. Hey, I'm a beginner dancer, and maybe they're not necessarily interested in pole, but they're looking for hip hop classes, ballet, lyrical, as an adult, and there might be adult drop-in classes, but that's typically geared towards folks that have already learned that through childhood, right? So I'd say Edmonton is really lacking a space in which adults can come together and learn dance from the very beginning, whatever niche um, dance community they're trying to be a part of. Uh, I would improve not dance community itself. I would improve something they can look up to, something that they have motivation for. Because, as I said, dance championships, workshops, dance studios, great. But we're, what we're doing it for? That's why I'm like, my goal is to move to and to go to and to find ways to organize and implement my project which is immersive theater show and that's what i would improve in artistic community because when people see that there is job there are opportunities in bigger city in smaller city that's uh, that's what attracts more people because they see opportunities they see money they see like some something worthy of their time and something worthy of their life 